Hey everybody, it's Pam at the Paper Outpost. Um, it's snippet roll day. That's right. Um, I've just been going through my roll of snippets here and these are made of either fabric or paper or combinations of both. And they're just fun little strips of whatnot glued together, um, sewn together. You can uh, put them together at your will at, in your own favorite way. They're a great way to use up scraps and that, and they are fabulous for putting on the spines of junk journals or uh, putting on the covers of junk journals or using as page trim or uh, bindings, things like that. Uh, they're just gorgeous, gorgeous little pieces. And uh, so I'll just show you some of the ones that I have made in the past. And I've tried many different ways of you making them. Uh, this was one with no sewing. It was uh, just gluing. And I think they come out just as pretty, so don't feel concerned or worried if you don't have a uh, sewing machine. You don't have to have one, but it sure is handy if you do. Uh, I believe this one was made out of a uh, ruffled bed sheet, and I'm no seamstress expert. I barely know. I'm like a danger to the sewing machine, so it curls its toes when it sees me coming. But we have an understanding. We've learned to love each other, and... Um, uh, somehow we managed to sew together and make beautiful stitches. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe not beautiful music together, but we make beautiful stitches sometimes. I mean, sometimes the threads get all tied up too. So it does happen to me, but don't be afraid of a sewing machine. It's only a tool. And if others can sew, that means it can be learned by anybody. And sometimes it's just a matter of sitting down with a YouTube video with your make and model of sewing machine, figuring out how to deal with that bobbin thing and uh, getting the thread started and pretty much after that it's not too bad in my little you know tiny way of sewing um, but you can add some pretty decorative elements with if you can just do straight stitch and maybe a zigzag um, you don't really need much more than that so you don't need a machine with 47,000 stitch designs um, I, I use primarily those two even though I have a, a machine that has 47,000 different stitch designs not it's not mandatory um, but it is a fun way to use up your scraps. So there you go, little bits and bops. And very, very handy in the junk journal world. Very, very handy way of also utilizing up those tiny little bits and bops. Um, and you get to use those little pretties that you've been saving. And I know you've been saving them because I save them too. And I'm, well, I'm guessing you're saving them too, like I save them too. Um, but, you know, maybe this is our year. We're going to use our pretties. Whoop, I just pulled off something I glued. Um, that happens. You know, we have more glue. We can glue it down. Um, so, yes, uh, little faux uh, scrabble pieces, uh, punched out little paper bird. I mean, just never know what you feel like sticking down here. Uh, punched out leaf. Okay. Um, so, yeah, very fun. But there are a million and one things that you can do with a snippet roll. Here's a snippet roll that's just made out of paper. So this was just uh, ruffling and wrinkling tons and tons of scraps that I had, little cutoff end pieces, folding them over. You can use a fork to do this. You might, might want to watch a video on that. Or you can just fold it with your fingers as it's coming through the machine. And you just create this beautiful long piece of paper ribbon. You can also do it with napkin or... Um, ribbons or any kind of tissue paper that would actually that would be kind of cool to play with today i wonder if i can i can sew tissue paper um like the stuff that you would use for packing or maybe napkins i wonder if that would be i wonder if i can do it okay what i think is okay idea is forming going off in a direct different direction than planned here's a smaller one thinner one um, I guess I didn't roll that one up very well, did I? But yeah, this scrunched up piece of some type of fabric that I just uh, turned into a, it's, it's, there's nothing glued to this one other than me ruffling the, probably learning how to ruffle fabric. We'll, we'll just say that. Okay. All right. So just some different examples of paper ones in here and more fabric ones, things like that. So very fun you find yourself having some little bits and bobs. So those are the prototypes, but we're gonna take this idea and play with it a little bit, take it one step further. So here we go, let's do it. Okay, 
I would like to announce that I have just successfully sewn tissue paper uh, by itself by shoving it through the machine and sewing it with some brown thread, scrunchy like. So that would be a very nice piece, maybe a base piece to start with in a junk journal for whatever purpose, maybe a, a page trim. Um, the nice thing about it is tissue paper is very, very thin. So it will work really well inside a junk journal without adding too much bulk. But you could also go ahead and glue fun things to this. So yet, let me show you how I did this. Super easy. Um, so I took, oops, let me back up a little bit. I, put, I took a piece of tissue paper. Oh, that's a little sideways. Okay. And I very gingerly, okay, not gingerly. I just, I just grabbed it, folded it quick so that I could tear a piece off the end. I like the torn look, so I'm rolling with the torn look, and that gave me a strip. Doesn't matter to me that it's all kind of wonky. I think I kind of like that. You could do them perfectly cut and straight as well. But then I just went in here. Oh, let's see if I can, how close I can get here. Like, hang on. Oh, hang on. Let me move everybody over. Okay, can we get closer? Maybe that's a better look. Is that a better look? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's tilting. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Is that okay? Still moving? Where are you going? Stay still. Okay, so basically what I did. Not a very good look here. Give you a better angle. Better angle. So I took a little bit of at, at the end. Still not good. Okay. And I bunched it up a bit just to give the, the machine something to grab onto. And then, let's see. I'll go to straight stitch. And I started sewing slowly. And basically shoving it in there as it goes, still feeding it in a little bit at a time, being very mindful, watching my fingers, um, making sure I don't stick my fingers under where the needle is. But as I continue to feed the d foot dogs, I think that's what they're called, feed dogs, foot dogs, um, grab the paper, tissue paper, and pull it through, doing all the hard work for me. And then... I stop when I get to the end magically with the great wisdom knowing that this is the time to stop sewing and you end up with something cool like that. Now there's about a million and one things you could do something with this. You could start making flowers. I don't know. It's going to make a little flower. You know what I mean? Like you could, you can make a little flower for a page. I don't know how many times you want to go around like that, but you could flatten that all down and put a little thing in the middle if you wanted to, or you could use it as a typical snippet roll. All right, so that was kind of fun. Hold on. Here I've got some beloved bed sheet. So close here. Okay. Sorry, you can see the bar on my, my, my camera arm. Um, it's a bit of an angle, isn't it? Um, so I'm just going to tear off some of this. Hang on, let me, let me orient you here for a second. Sorry for all the, the mayhem going on, but trying something new. Want to see if it works. Want to take you with me on the journey of exploration. No, this is not bed sheet. This is a shirt or something. I can tell by the pattern. It's got some type of pattern in it. But um, let's see if I can tear it. Am I on the weft or the weave? I have no idea. Just does it tear or not is my important question. It might be a little wide, but maybe not. Maybe I'm going to use it for a spine. So I don't, I'm going to leave it wide. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Come back in here. Tilt this. Excuse the bar, please. Um, all right. So same thing, kind of scrunch it up a little against the needle. It works to help scrunch. And maybe this time I'm going to zoo is I'm going to zoo a zigzag stitch. Here we go. All right. Just scrunching, rolling, scrunching, really not doing anything that requires any thought other than watching my fingers not get poked by the needle. That's probably the most important thing. You can kind of, you're probably not supposed to do this, but maybe Gently pull from behind. Probably not supposed to do that. I just feel like that's a thing that's like wrong for some reason. So don't listen to me. Listen to whatever everybody else says about sewing. But I'm just going to show you like what a complete novice does when she's le left to reckless abandon. There we go. All right. Well, this came out pretty. Oh, I like that. I just cut the end of it off. Oh, well. So now I have a nice little ruffle. Isn't that cute? That was so easy. And you could just do this all day and it would be very relaxing and you would feel so good at the end of your day. So we have um, tissue paper ones and we have 
um, fabric ones. Okay, so hold on. Here's another thing that you can use in the world of junk journaling. These are, I think they're wedding carpet runners or they're tablecloth covers, but it has this lace design in it and it's really pretty. And I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I'm going to cut a strip of it. And, and I think it's one of those two things. I think it's either, oh no, okay. So it tears a long way. So I'm just going to not fight it and tear a piece because it's easier. We like easy here at the paper outpost. And we tilt this way, coming in. Oh, the camera angle is horrible today, sorry. Okay, same concept. Just I just want to see if it grabs well and like different things that you can use for this same uh, process. So these are the bases for the rolls of snippetness. And um, this is gonna be a, another ruffle. This is kind of like a half paper, half fabric substance. It's very pretty, it's in its own right. It doesn't require a lot of decoration or design beyond this, but you could certainly come and decorate the bejeebers out of these, which would be very fun too. All depends how far you wanna take it. Let's see what we got. That one came out really good, huh? It doesn't take that long. I mean, once you get going, it's no big deal. Okay, so we have that material. Let's see what else we have around here. Okay, now I have just a piece of ribbon. This is a multicolored ribbon I got off of something. I thought it was pretty. Let's see if this does the amazing ruffle snippet roll. I'm calling it a snippet roll because I'm, I guess I'm planning on decorating them, but I te technically these are ruffles. Or ruffle like things. Okay, I think I'm going to switch to a straight stitch for this. It'll go a little faster. And this one wants to run around a little bit more, but I'm doing the best I can with what I got. That's all I can do in life. Carry on and keep keep uh, moving these forward. Um, and let's see how we do here. Ruffle, ruffle. Ruffle snippet. Oh, I, I kind of let go of it. That's all right. It's going to be a weird one. This one moves a little differently through the machine. Have to work a little. Oh, we should slow down and ruffle more. Got to really watch your fingers on this point. Whoop, I completely went off track. Okay, let's stop there and just see what we have. Okay. Okay, okay so. It has its own, I would give it its own unique look, but it's pretty. You could even use it for spine dangle stuff. Wouldn't that be pretty? Um, run it down the side of the page, the top of a page. Um, you could trim uh, journal cards, journal pockets with it. I mean, it would just be really something pretty to have in your stash. Okay, so we have this. All right, hold on. Okay, here is a long piece of index from a book page. And people sometimes ask me what to do with index pages. Well, this is one of those fun things that you can do with an index page. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm gonna tear one of these. So I have this nice little strip and I'm just gonna come along and I'm going to maybe bunch up the end a little bit, orient you to the sewing side here, pop it in there, go slow. Get ready to ruff, whoa, get ready to ruffle. All right, ruffle. Then I'm gonna go to the zigzag. I think it might look pretty with the, very careful. And it, somebody told me that you can use, not somebody told me, I have, I have tried it. Um, um, you can use a fork somehow to do this, but right now I have some, I don't know why the paper's making me a little nervous. Like I don't wanna, I don't wanna sew my fingers. Okay, now I'll go ahead, grab the paper, slightly encouraging it to go through. All right, don't sew the fingers, don't sew the fingers. Keep all appendages in view at all times. Oh man, this is a little hairy, but I'm doing it. You don't want to go through the metal of the tweezer, that would be bad with the needle. Wear eye goggles, safety hazmat suit. And then finish her off like you knew what you are doing the whole time. I had no idea. Okay, so I think I got a little better at it at the end. I was still sort of finding my way here. But then 
you know, I kind of figured it out. So you can have a lot of fun with paper too. That's basically what I'm trying to show you is you can sew paper and, and ruffle it and just, then you grab your next piece and you attach it here and you just keep going. Like you can make a very long piece, even though the pieces of pages are not that long. Um, but if you have tons of index pages and you want to know what to use them for, they make adorable little ruffles. Okay. So that ends the sewing portion of the show. Now we're going on to the decorating of these ribbon uh, ruffles, which are going to turn be turned now into decorative, decorated snippet rolls. Go a little closer here. And um, uh, what I have pulled out is my bling, my bling box, my bling drawer, my punched drawer, all little punched pieces, my words drawer, all sorts of different wordage things in here, and my numbers rubber stamps. So I thought those might be just fun things to add to these. So let's all right, there's suddenly not enough desk on the giant desk with all this stuff. But now there we go. Okay. So let's take these out of the way and we'll focus on one. Oh, and don't forget, grab your stickles and grab your uh, gilding paste wax stuff. That might be fun to play with here too. So just some random ideas. Now, let me put that up there. Okay. Maybe we'll put some larger elements down first. So... Am I on the biggest one there? Maybe I have some clusters, pre-made clusters that I made. So this is something that you could put on a, this is fabric fix glue, clear silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper, not sponsored, just like the glue. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I'm just sticking them on here. So this is something you can do relatively quickly now that you've, created a few of these beautiful little clustery things. And it doesn't really matter how big or how small or what they were. This one even has a word on it. So maybe we'll just glue that baby on here. And going down the road, putting some of these little punched out things with, I put glitter on them. I think I glitter glued a page and then did some punching on it. And um, I think I want to ink this baby. I know, I know. She's inking it again, yet again. Why can't I find my new brown inker? Is that you? No, that's the pink one. Oh, here you are. She barely looked brown, like you're brand new or something. I know, I finally I finally broke down and I, I changed my foam pad on my dauber. Uh, this is vintage pay, uh, photo, if anybody's wondering. Zinc, or zinc oxide. Um, distress oxide. I just thought it might pop a little better. Uh-huh. All right. All right. There we go. All right. So now we have this. Okay. Yeah. All right. Still something very simple and pretty. Maybe I'm going to do a little inking on the edges of this little guy. So he has a little bit more drama, some vintage, rustic, primitive drama. And with all those little rubbly nubblies that he has, let me go a little closer, probably too close. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just gonna come here and do a bit of this, just to pick it up a little bit. The highs and the lows, the valleys. And uh, so we've got a, like a, a grungied up paper. And then um, what else can we do with this? We can do some bling. Oops, sorry. I'm taking away my own design. Uh, maybe I'm going to do a stamp. Let me do 28. Yeah, 28. Let's get a black ink. Our old friend, Black Soot from Distress Ink. Ranger, Tim Holtz, all related somehow. Um, no idea there. Okay, I'm going to put a number there. Okay, just 128. We don't need more than one. Um, what are you? How about, well, there's already an eight. Let's use a different number. How about two? Okay, two. There. So just some random numbers placed on there. And then uh, maybe we're going to add a little bling because, you know, there's nothing wrong with a little bling. Oh, here's a little dragonfly that we might 
I'd like to add that somewhere. And maybe the fact that he's white is good. He's going to show up a little bit more. Um, so let me take that brown dauber and make this brown, darker brown behind him. I'm just going to make him even show up more. Okay. We're going to Fabrifix glue this little adorable butterfly down. Not, not a butterfly, Pam. It's a dragonfly. I know. So this one's going that way. That way. I'm trying to change the orientation of things. So this appreciation word is this way. This I love you is that way. So I don't know. I, I don't know if I did that right. But you see, changing the orientation of direction gives more eye interest. Um, that's always helpful. And now... We're going to go, you don't have to put everything on every one, but if you did, it might look like this. Um, here's some pink. I've already got some pink in there, so maybe some pink of this will go well. I'm going to put a tiny drop. The easiest way to do this, you could dupe it on here, but you get it on your fingers. Maybe I'll give him a pink head. How about that? I'm going to try dropping it on there. It didn't come off at all. Try again. We do. Okay. Get in the center of the head. Okay. We'll have that. Okay. And um, what else do we have? We have that. What's this? This is a pretty little. I don't know. Actually, you could just put that right on top, or on an angle. I mean, you don't even have to follow a line. It could be a Something like that. Let's do that. I'm going to put the glue on this. Also, so I'm, I'm kind of doing it counterintuitively now, putting it on this instead of on the actual paper. But once I put it down, I have to commit to it. Okay. okay there. I have committed. Okay. All right. There we go. Pick up that little hair. All right. Hmm? Okay, so you can just keep going and building the design or just leave it very plain and simple to be used at a later time or as is in a very neutral, soft, gentle, gentle and loving way. Okay, so we did one. One done. One's done. Where are the others? Here. Okay, so this is the... Let me do the ones you probably have. Okay, let's do the material one. Maybe you have the bed sheet or the old blouse or shirt that you've, you've shredded. Um, let's see. Um, words. Okay, actually, maybe I think I'm going to use rubber stamps on this one. I'm going to use a peg stamp and black soot ink. And I'm going to rubber stamp on this little guy and see what comes up. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, that actually works out pretty well. And you could use a bigger stamp and just go over it. So I may try just for fun, just so we can see what it looks like. We get a... Oh, God, I've got some bigger stamps. Get a, get in there and get the bigger stamps, Pam. Um, okay. Here's a bigger stamp. See this baby? Now we're talking. All right. Let's load this puppy up and see what happens when we stamp on this. And yeah, there we go. Are they going to be amazing? Or huh, what were you thinking, sister? Okay. Probably would be better if I had a spongy or something behind it. Oh, it actually picks it up pretty well, though. It's kind of cool. You can see the design. You can see the other little rubber stamps through it. That looks sort of neat, actually. Let's like, do it a lot and see what happens. So now we have something that looks like this. It's very pretty, isn't it? I mean, it just gives you a totally different look. And um, maybe with this one, you could leave it neutral like that. But if you just can't keep your fingers off, you know, these little things to play with, then we're going to open it up like this. Head tax, wax, paste, stuff. It's probably get get your hazmat suit on before you do this. I'm sure you know, like you'll grow the third eye. I'm gonna put it on my finger. Um, I'm just just touch it here and there. Just give it a little something. I mean, you can put this stuff on fabric, cardboard, anything you want, paper, bling. Uh, as a little accent, it will dry up a little bit, so it's not gonna be as smeary and waxy as when you first get it. I think designed to be used on furniture and stuff like that to highlight the little nubs and stuff. So now we have that. That's kind of cool, right? I mean, that's a little different. You might have uses and purposes for something like that. So that's really cool. And that looks very different. 
than this, but the same concept, just using a different base material and different decorating techniques. Okay, so, whoop, 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 yep, that was one, whoop, hitting the ground, and now I ran over it. Okay, come back here. I got it. All right, what else do we have? Oh, we have this one, the paper, right? Um, hopefully we all have access to paper in some way, shape, or form, so what could you do with paper? Well, gosh, golly, we could definitely um, stickle it. I have Nouveau Drops. I call it, this is all stickling to me. Nouveau Drops, Liquid Pearls, Stickles. They're all some form of uh, little dots, uh, metallic or uh, glitter dots that you can put. This is copper penny color. And these Nouveau Drops, there's a big bottle and it's a nice applicator. So let's just go ahead and, you know what? I want to ink the edges first. Let me ink the edges. Yes. Okay. You don't have to do the edges. You know, I always say that. You don't have to ink. You can ink if you want to ink. I, I enjoy a little ink here and there. It, it gives a nice look. I'm just going to go across the, the hills to show a little bit more of the relief, the texture of this beautiful ruffle. Okay. All right. Now we go. I'm going to use Copper Penny. Let's go closer. He's far away. Okay. And maybe that's not enough contrast. Let me use a different color. Uh, how about black? Nouveau Drops in Ebony Black. Okay. Crisp, Nouveau Crystal Drops. All right. Here, not thinking, just doing. Doop. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down up. If you go straight up, you don't get the tadpole tail. But if you drag it across, sometimes you get the tadpole tail. So, or the pollywog tail, depending on. Did you ever call them pollywogs? That's what we called them in Canada. Tadpoles too. But we had this funny thing about pollywogs. Are they called that in the United States? Does anybody know? Baby, baby frogs before they're frogs. They're sort of in that infant stage. They're like they still have a big long tail. Okay. There, oh, sorry. There we go. Now, um, let's add some other things, like uh, maybe we're going to come in with a Sharpie marker in fine, and we can doodle. I probably should have put the stickles thingies on last, the Nouveau drops. Now I'm going to drag. I'm going to demonstrate how to drag your, your elbow. What was that? through your work. Um, I think I'm going to, I don't know, do just do like squiggly lines connecting maybe every other one. It doesn't have to be every one. This doesn't have to be like fancy or great artwork. It's just for a design element. And, um, whoop, I kind of went across there. That's all right. But, you know, when it, it's art, you can pretty much get away with calling it anything. Like, this is a design element. This is me making a squiggle. Who are we kidding? But, but right now, it's an artistic design element. And it's not perfect, but it's just meant to be, yes, dare I say, whimsical. Okay, so we have that. So maybe we want to add something more to that. Where'd my punch go? Oh, here's my punch. Okay, so what, what's this? Like little, little labels or something? Little tags? They're cute. I'm going to glue some of these down. Oh, I know what I dropped. My brown dauber, but I don't want my brown dauber. No, no. Yes, I do. Okay, I'm just going to ink it up a little bit. Okay. All right. Got that there. Now oh, I got a few of those. So maybe I'm going to use. Somebody gave me these. Thank you very much for. Oh, look, there's different kinds. That's so cool. She punched these out, painstakingly punched these out. And now they're going to be used on this amazing <laughs> little ruffle snippet roll. Okay, here we go. All right. Yeah. Okay. So now we have that. I feel like I would like to put something metal on there. I don't know why. I'm just going to come along and pop something metal. Maybe... 
Well, oh, okay, I have these little brass rivety things. Would they look good? Maybe. Let's try them. They're, they're, they're pretty sticky. I don't need to use... Oh, okay. You want, oh, no, con. All right, maybe we will put a little dop. Dollop. Dollop. Yep. Stuck my fingers in it. Yeah. Yeah, that would be now. That looks like a little... Uh, Hello, everybody. Wait. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Sunshine. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, you are gone now from existence. And we're down. Okay, there we go. Another one of those. Nope. And then another one of those. Yep. Okay, that looks good. I like that a lot, but I want more. What do I want? Do I have any black dots? I'd like some black dots. Let me look deep here. Looking, looking, and we came up with... No black dots. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and I'm going to, I could actually use the stickles again, but I'm not going to. I'm going to draw them on. I'm just going to draw a dot. Just wanted to show you different ways that you can do things if you don't have bling and things like that. Like maybe you just want to come in here and draw an extra dot or two. Just for the sheer fun of it. All right. And then maybe right in the middle of this one, it needs a big finale. I'm looking in my word bucket here. I have something that would look cool. Oh, I kind of I like this word enjoy. Maybe I can tear it out of there. So if you have any printing, if you have any, um, oh, this says enjoy the ride. We can, we can take that whole thing. Enjoy the ride. Okay, so I can get up a little bit. And or you can tear them out of books or magazines, words, things like that. So or you can print them out on your computer, type them up, make a page of words, or um, um, you can find the printed words as digikits or printables on the internet. Okay. So now we have this. Okay. So let's go ahead and show you what we made, so you can just get an idea. Um, one two, three. There we go. So just fun with some different types of papers and materials that you can quickly turn in to pretty little elements for your junk journals. Thanks, everybody. Have an awesome day. Um, sunshine? Sunshine. <laughs> Do you have a word? I would like to have a word. It's a very short word, but it will be a word. And I've been thinking about a lot of words to use today. I'm working on expanding my vocabulary as I am now back again to be a um, canine. I am now, I'm going to um, ratchet myself down and become a canine cub reporter again because I think I outgrew my boots a little too quickly. Hello, everybody. It's Sunshine. Canine cub reporter here. Cub pup reporter. Um. The word of the day is wrinkle. Sometimes wrinkles are good, like in this stuff. We like the wrinkles. Sometimes wrinkles are just lines of joy because you've smiled so much while you're crafting. And if there's any other wrinkles out there, we are not acknowledging their existence. Happy wrinkling, everybody. Sunshine out. <laughs> okay. Well, I like that. I like that very much. We will only think about the happy wrinkles in life. So take care, everybody. I have a free monthly emailed newsletter. Uh, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, new audio material about junk journals, paper crafting, life of a crafter, and answering your crafty questions. Uh, you can also watch video podcasts on Spotify. Um, I have an Etsy shop where I have journals, bundles, kits, and fundles for sale. Uh, I have an Amazon shop. If you're looking for favorite tools and supplies, I do my best to put the links on there for you. Um, it does help my shop, but you don't pay more for the items for using my links. So thank you very much. Um, I also have a t-shirt shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, you can get that on a t-shirt, sweatshirt, zip hoodie, mug tote, or water bottle. And remember most of all that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. Until next time, papery joy to you. Bye.